Hi, and welcome to this webinar. My name is Alan Kunnesland, and today I'm going to talk about the new extension from GeoCap, Maritime Limits and Boundaries for ArcGIS. This webinar will consist of a short presentation, and then I will give a live demonstration of the extension. If you have any questions during the webinar, please click the blue button in the lower right corner and type in your question. All questions will be answered within 24 hours after this webinar. So first off, I'm going to talk a little bit about GeoCap. GeoCap is a Norwegian software company owned by Geodata AS, the Norwegian new distributor of ArcGIS. GeoCap develops specialized extensions for the ArcGIS platform. We mainly work in industries like petroleum, subsea, hydrography, and the law of the sea. We have a long history working with the law of the sea and have helped over 50 nations with their extended continental shelf delineation. This experience has led us to develop the maritime limits and boundaries extension for ArcGIS. This ex extension is specifically designed to help nations effectively calculate and maintain a digital data set of their maritime limits and boundaries. The past few years, we've worked with Geoscience Australia and the Canadian Hydrographic Service, trying to automate the process of calculating maritime limits and boundaries. One of the main challenges has been the amount of processing required to buffer millions of points. Normally, this would require you to split up the baseline into smaller pieces, buffer each piece and stitch the result into a single line again. This requires human interaction, which again easily can cause error. Another thing that can cause human interaction is the need to buffer normal and straight baselines separately. This is something which they of course wanted to do in one operation. Moving data between different systems for managing and processing data also caused a lot of issues. And lastly, having a good way of maintaining the metadata was an important requirement. So with this in mind, GeoCap has developed an extension to ArcGIS, which solves these challenges. So getting back to one of these points here, uh, I want to talk a little bit about, a, about uh, different baseline types. Uh, so you have two different types. You have normal, which is following the low water line along the coast. And then you have straight baselines for uh, connecting fringing islands or crossing mouth of rivers or bays. And the way that you calculate limit lines from these different baseline types is different. So you either use the envelope of arcs or a wagon wheel following the coastline, or you use the tracé parallel to project the uh, straight baseline outwards to your limit line. So this has been combined into one operation inside this new extension. So what does this extension include? First of all, it supports the ArcGIS formats and the data management principles. For So for those of you who are familiar with ArcMap, it will be very easy to use. Uh, the extension is a normal uh, installation file that you can bring into ArcMap. Uh, it works with ArcMap 10.0 and above. And the toolbox Excel itself comes with a set of geoprocessing tools for calculating midline and limit lines. It also comes with a 3D visualization window inside ArcMap. OK, so I'll jump into a demo. Uh, today, we're going to work off the coast of the US. And I'm going to show you different ways of calculating limit lines and to work with the different baselines. I'm also going to show you a demo of the midline calculation. So here's our area of interest in the, the pink polygon here. And you have the different baselines here. So I have these uh, baseline points along the coast. And you have these straight segments here, 
which crosses uh, typically bays. And if you look over to the right, I have my maritime limits and boundaries toolbox here. So I can bring up one of the tools here, the calculate limit lines, multiple inputs. Let me bring that up on the screen. So you'll recognize that this is a geoprocessing tool inside ArcMap. So you have two boxes here for input data. And you can have as many different feature classes or shape files as you want into these uh, input dialogs. So I'll select my base point data set first, and then my straight baseline data set here. So you see that this will calculate both normal and straight in one operation. Then I select which distance I want to calculate. In this case, I want to do 12 nautical miles, so the territorial sea. So you type in 12. Uh, I want to keep my distant unit to 12. And then here for point spacing, uh, this is the point spacing along the resulting line. So this is automatically calculated uh, based on trying to have an arc to chord difference on the resulting line, which is less than one meter. So in this case, that would be 0 0.5 nautical miles. If you type in, uh, for instance, 200, you would see that the point spacing would be one. Uh, so it's still keeping it uh, under one meter for the arc to chord difference. Uh, this is a number that you can overwrite if you want to do that. Uh, but for now, I will just keep it to 0 0.5. Then I decide which area I want to calculate inside. So I want to have my area of interest here, this pink polygon. And then I have to decide a output name, a prefix to my resulting data sets. So I'll type in TS for territorial C. And uh, you have different output data sets here. So normally you would want to just keep those checked so you get all the output data sets. Now this tool takes a couple of minutes to run. So I'm not going to spend this webinar running this tool. So I'll just show you the results. I'll bring up the result here. So here you have the distant line itself. So one thing that you'll notice is that these straight segments comes from the straight baseline and you have the more arced um, line coming from the base points, uh, normal base points. Uh, in addition, uh, you can see which uh, base point that contributes to this line by turning on the connection polygons. So here you see for each line segment, it points back to a base point or a straight baseline. So that's a nice uh, visual way of looking at the data and seeing which base points actually contribute to the distant line. Uh, but if you want to go further than just doing a visual inspection, you can uh, select a line piece. So say, let's say I select this one and I can bring that up into the table view. So I look at my selected, uh, this is actually more than one line piece in this case. Uh, but, okay, so now I've selected two line pieces. So what you can do is actually go here and look at the related tables. So what we've done here is that we've uh, related uh, the resulting um, limit line to the original data set. So if I now look at relates to the baseline points, 
you'll see that it automatically uh, automatically shows you which points on the line uh, here, and you get that table view over the source data. So you see that for every single line piece, you get the reference back to the original base point and the metadata associated with that base point. So you have a good overview of the metadata here. Uh, in addition to that, uh, one of the other resulting data sets here are the critical points. So in this case, you, you now you're looking at all the base points, but we also extract a data set of the uh, base points that was used. So if I turn off the original base point now and on the critical, you'll see that there are more original base points, and then you're left with only the critical ones here as a separate data set. So that's the output from the limit line calculation. So now I want to show you how you can work with only parts of your base points, uh, focusing in on smaller areas. OK. So in this case, I have a area of interest, which is a bit different from the one, the pink one. Uh, these are licensing areas. And what I can do here is I can select one licensing polygon, like this. And I can run my tool again. And this time, I want to use that uh, licensing area polygon. So I use that polygon. And this will now honor my selection. So it would only calculate the limit line inside this polygon. So again, I can select my base points and the straight base lines. Uh, and this time, I actually want to calculate more than just the 12. I also want to calculate the contingency zone. So I'll calculate 24. And you can do this by simply adding a space between the different uh, distances, like this. And you'll see now it will calculate 12 and 24. And likewise, here you get a two different numbers for the point spacing along the resulting line. Uh, now I want to give it a new prefix. So I'll type in TS and contingency zone. And this time I'll actually do the calculation. It shouldn't take too long. Uh, what you'll get in this case is you'll get one data set, uh, but the limit line data set would contain both the 12 and the 24 nautical miles in one data set. This is something that you can uh, um, split into two different data sets at the later stage if, uh, if you find that useful. So you can follow the processing here if you go to results. You can see that the tool is uh, running. So this is uh, very useful when you only want to calculate inside a smaller area uh, without having to split up your baseline data set uh, to reduce the processing time. And there it succeeded. Uh, so what will happen now, it will add those 
data sets to the table of content, so it will appear in the map. Uh, if you look to the right on the screen, you'll actually see the file geodatabase containing all the different uh, uh, source data and also the resulting data sets. Uh, so you see a few different data types in here. Okay. So now it's been added to the uh, the map. Uh, I can turn off the original here. So okay. So you'll see here. Maybe I'll make this a little bit more visible. You actually have two, two lines uh, in one data set. If I bring this up again uh, in the attribute table, and I select here, you'll see that uh, it gives you a distance here. And in that same data set, if I select here, it gives you a, a distance here. So you'll see that this is the 12, and this is the 24. Um, and in, as I did in the first exercise, you can also see that it extracts critical points and uh, gives you a connection polygon for both of the data sets. So now if you want to go the other way, and instead of calculating inside a inside a um, selected area or a polygon, you can go and just remove these. You can actually select a set of base points and calculate based on only a selected set of base points. So now if I want to select these, I have to make these selectable first. So I select these base points, and then I rerun my tool. This time I just want to keep the, or just add the base points. Uh, I'll not include any straight baselines this time. I add to 12. Just calculate 12 this time. I select my area of interest. I'll keep the, using the blue, the big pink one to, uh, now. And then I type in a prefix TS, select that. OK. So what's happening now, it's taking uh, the full baseline data set, but it's only calculating based on the selected points. So this is useful if you're investigating into different base points uh, to see how they contribute to to the line. So you can sort of omit some points or uh, or add some points and uh, and see how they uh, will uh, affect the, the limit line. And of course, this speeds up the speeds up the process quite a bit since you don't have to use all the, uh, the full data set as input. So again, we'll wait a little bit for the process to finish. And here you'll see. Now that it uh, it only calculated based on the points that I selected. So uh, one thing I want to show you before we head into the midline or equidistant line calculation is that there is a similar tool 
uh, calculate limit line, which is not called multiple input, which is very similar. Uh, but you notice that it only has one input. So the way that we've done it here is that you can select your input data set. And then if you have, if you've merged your data set with, to have both normal and straight baselines in one data set, you can use this. So then you have, you would have a section in your data set that a column that has a type baseline type, for instance, and you can have a normal or a straight segment and you select which attribute is normal and which is straight and it would use use the associated algorithm for calculating those differently so this is a little bit uh, dependent on how you structure uh, your data behind uh, everything okay so i'll jump into the demo for calculating midlines So in this um, demo, I have uh, in the same area, we've uh, extracted points from different states. So you have in this map uh, base points from Massachusetts, from uh, Maine, and base points from uh, New Hampshire. So those are in green, blue, and red. Uh, what we can do now is to run the calculate equidistant line. Uh, first thing we do is you select the which uh, base points that should be, or which boundary we should calculate from. So in this case, I want to calculate a boundary from for Massachusetts, and I want to calculate that midline uh, between Massachusetts and both Maine and New Hampshire. So you see that you can add as many uh, other countries or states, uh, in this case, uh, to this list. So I'll add Maine and New Hampshire. Uh, if you go further down on the menu, you have something called weights, and I'll get back to that later. Um, in midline point spacing, uh, you can uh, put in a specific point spacing along the midline. Uh, but if you don't do that, you will only get the turning points. So in this case, I want just want to keep the turning points for the midline. So I'll leave that empty. And then again, I want to select my area of interest which is this big um, pink area. All right, I've selected my uh, area of interest and then I can type in a name for my midline. Uh, and I midline. Again, this takes a couple of minutes to run. So I'll just show you the results in this case. Um, cancel. And I can turn on the midline. So this is the midline between Massachusetts and on the opposite side, Maine and New Hampshire. I can turn on the turning points here. So you see actually the turning points along that line. And then I can also turn on the um, connection lines or try points um, showing the different base points and how they contribute to that line. So if I zoom in closer to this area, for instance, you'll see that some of the points comes from uh, New Hampshire in the beginning, and then they end up uh, being points from the main that contributes to this line. You can, uh, if I turn on here and I select the midpoints, you can open up the, uh, the attribute table 
and look at the actual points. Let's see. So here you have the latitude and longitude for that point. You can see it's a tri point, and you see the distance back to the different uh, base points. Again, here you'll notice that there is a, a weight put in. So I'll show you this uh, in a second. Um, if I turn on the contributing lines here as well, we can look at the metadata for this as well. Uh, let's select the try point here so we can get there we go uh, again you get uh, the latitude and longitude uh, and you also get the distance back to the base points Now, I mentioned uh, weights, and if you look at, I think it's if you open this main attribute here, you'll see that uh, we've added a column here called weights. And in this case, you'll have the full weight if you're using one, and you have zero weight if you're using um, Zero. So in this case here, I have some uh, points here that uh, I've set to 0 0.5 weights. So that means that they only contribute 50% uh, to that limit line if they're being used, so half the distance. So if I now use that in my dialog, you'll see that uh, you remember that I didn't ha use the weight in my previous exercise. This, if I add that now, you can have, I'll select main here, for instance. If I would add Massachusetts and do that same operation, then I would have, could set this to apply weights. And now it would honor those weights that are listed in that table. So uh, if I make this selectable, So you see that I've had set this to 0 0.5. And I've also done that calculation with weights and you, so that you can see the difference. So if I turn off my here, and if I turn off the weighted midline, you can see the difference when that point here does not contribute uh, more than 0 0.5 as a weight. So that way you can use uh, weights to um, look at different scenarios for how a midline might work. So to finish off this webinar, I want to show you uh, one last thing, um, and that's the 3D viewer. So if I turn off my area of interest here, I'll turn off some lines, some points here. Uh, you remember that I had, um, I mentioned that there was a 3D viewer inside here. So you can turn on Bathy. So I have a bathymetry that I've added to my map here. And up here, you'll find a Enable 3D Window button. If you click that, 
uh, you will get a 3D window inside ArcMap. I can bring down my catalog here. And this is a 3D window, which displays uh, any 3D data and line data that you might have. So this could be useful for uh, states working in uh, with uh, boundaries that comes uh, starts with in rivers, where you start with uh, looking into Talveg and, and so on. So that was a quick demo of the Maritime Limits and Boundaries extension. Uh, so to summarize, uh, you can see that it was easy to uh, calculate limit lines both from normal and straight baselines in one operation. And you could also calculate multiple lines at the same time. It was also relatively easy to work in areas of interest, uh, looking into uh, only calculating inside a polygon or based on selected base points without having to recalculate or use uh, everything as input. Uh, because when you have big data sets that could uh, take a lot of time having to, to use everything as uh, input to the calculation. Uh, you can also see that it was quite easy to, to associate any line piece with uh, the source data, so the, uh, the source base points. Uh, so there's a very good connection with the limit line or, or the midlines back to uh, the base points. So based on that, I want to thank you all for joining this webinar. Please let me know if you have any uh, questions uh, or if you want to try out the extension. Uh, send me an email and uh, I'll be happy to talk to you. Thank you.